Today I'm here with Sharon Gannon and David Light from Jiva Mukti Yoga in New York and I'm um, looking forward to talking to you. So I'll just start with a couple of basic questions. Can you tell us what Jiva Mukti means to you? Oh my God, an examination. We'll try. Okay. How about you go? You, you go first, David. The Jiva is the individual self and Mukti means liberation. Liberation from separateness. Okay, and Sharon, would you like to make your extended comment? <laughs> um, Chumuti Yoga is a method of yoga recognized by Time magazine as one of the nine forms of Hatha Yoga practiced in the world today. It was developed in 1985 by two East Village artists from the Lower East Side of New York City, Sharon Gannon and David Life. Why, why do you think Jiva Mukti Yoga is so popular? Um, hmm, good question. We haven't got the faintest idea. <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess the broader question is why is yoga popular in the world today? And I think because it is such a universal practice that it resonates with people from various countries and various traditions, various, uh, uh, all different people benefit from yoga and, and really I think that that the evidence of that is the rapid spread of yoga around the world. We're going through a global crisis. There's a lot of difficulty in the world and those things could be traced back to how we human beings are treating the environment, mother nature, the other animals, that we share this planet with and of course each other and our own selves. Jumuti Yoga is the type of yoga which is focused on dismantling our present culture which is based on the idea that the earth belongs to us and should be exploited if you have the means to do so. And so I think that perhaps Jiva Yoga is popular because people, it provides people with a means to do something about the, the situation in the world today, which of course is uh, manifested in each one of our individual lives. We're hoping for a revolution, and I think a lot of other people are too. And by revolution, I don't mean war, I mean a new way of life, yeah, a new way of living. And part of um, one thing that's really strong with you is your veganism. So, do you want to talk a little bit about that and how it fits in with the yoga? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A yogi by nature is someone who's trying to live harmoniously, harmoniously with the planet Earth, with all other life forms. And that's in direct opposition to our present global culture, which is based on exploiting the earth, exploiting animals, um, enslaving animals. The goal of yoga is freedom, or in Sanskrit, the term is mukti, liberation. And if you want freedom for yourself, then it would enhance your project not to have anything to do with slavery. And so veganism um, is a way that you can free yourself from what everybody else seems to be addicted to, and that is enslaving animals and exploiting the earth. One of the primary practices of yoga, of course, is the practice of ahimsa, or non-harming. And under the auspices of not harming, we find that dietary choices that we make we have many options available to us. We can harm more or we can harm less according to what we choose to put on our plate. And uh, that's something that we feel is important to the world, uh, to the other beings that we share the world with, and certainly is an integral aspect of a yoga practice that is complete and full and allows Liberation, I mean, we're not talking about liberation of individuals. We're talking about the oneness of being 
and the liberation of when one joins with others and stops perceiving otherness, instead perceives a sameness of being or essence, the same essence in the tree or the rock or the sheep or the cow or the kangaroo or any other being that happens to share this little planet with us. Perhaps veganism could be very simply explained as a way to be kinder. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to live in a world where people were kinder? Have a particular traditional lineage or anything that you draw on? Um, or is it just Yoga. To, um, Yoga. I mean, all of these ideas that we've been discussing, they're all found in the yogic scriptures. It's not that we're teaching yoga and veganism or yoga and animal rights or yoga and activism or yoga and environmentalism. I mean, all of these ideas are, have been stated for thousands of years. They're found in the yogic texts. All of our gurus were, were uh, vegetarian vegans. They were animal rights. They were political activists. They were... Uh, they really have uh, empowered us to, to be on this path. I mean, the most important thing that a person can do these days is to dare to care. To dare to care about others, not just their own self. So, um, Sharon, tell us a little bit about your latest album. I heard that it's um, really high up on the pop charts. <laughs> Krishna! Krishna, Krishna! Krishna, Krishna. Um, yes, it's an album of mantras. The Hare Krishna mantra is one of the, the tracks. And um, yeah, it, 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 it surprisingly became very popular uh, very quickly soon after it was released. Um, and it's wonderful that people have embraced these Sanskrit mantras. I wanted to make an album of Sanskrit mantras that didn't use traditional Indian instrumentation or arrangements. So I think we really succeeded in what we were trying to do and make a crossover album into the pop music world. Yeah. So we were number we we're number two on the Billboard charts for three weeks. What's the next first? <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of books in the work Sharon has already written but needs to finish up. Uh, a book of uh, menus, of, of recipes, uh, a cookbook. Uh, she also has a, an amazingly thick book of poetry. Together we're working on a book on uh, yoga assists. Most of my time though is spent writing um, production manuals, procedure manuals, how-to manuals for um, management of Jumalti Yoga Centers and teacher training courses. Um, so uh, recently uh, we finished a production manual on how to put on a Jumalti teacher training course. So we hope that that will allow our students to start doing more Jumalti teacher trainings on their own. Um, so we're excited about that. We have um, we have a sanctuary, a wildlife sanctuary that we maintain in upstate New York. It's 120 acres, and we have foxes who live there, and bears, and raccoons, and deer, and turkeys, and and many other varieties of birds, and and uh, other animals, and trees, and. <laughs> and fairies and fish and many beings that we um, provide sanctuary for. And we really believe that it's up to each one of us individually to cause that to happen. Again, not to wait for, uh, for it to come from top down, but for each one of us to join our yards together and make a, a corridor for migrating species. Mm -hmm. Happy to see them walk through our backyard and eat anything that they like. Yeah.